Hello, uh, my name is Lars und Kasper. I'm from Germany. Uh, Germany. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, in-game catering on Lops in Germany. I did that uh, with uh, some other people for like a long time now. Uh, of course, everything I say is from my personal point of view. Um, it's not the truth. It's one truth. Uh, if you have another, I'm perfectly okay with that. I hope your truth, uh, uh, you're okay with my truth. And um, what I also have to say is that um, we had, we had really, uh, we, I had a really big time in, yeah, like, ten years to like three years ago. And the last three three years, we had been a bit lazy. So uh, not everything I will tell you is really up to date, but um, yeah, we're still in business. Uh, it's not business because we are volunteering. Yeah, anyhow. So uh, what actually is that Kampfküche? Um, we uh, work a lot with beer because that's important to us to get our motor driven. And uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you in my lecture uh, how we do the stuff. Um, what requirements you uh, want to have, uh, then I tell you about the restrictions that come from the government or from the law. Uh, I'm going to tell you about logistics, uh, equipment, and yeah, I'm going to talk a bit uh, about diets. And as I already told you, from our point of view. So, and actually, this is also from, we only worked in Germany. So, for example, the rest restrictions are from country to country to country totally different, even so they shouldn't in the EU, but they are. So a bit about the history. Um, actually, we started in uh, 1998. We've been on LARP, and uh, there had been a catering crew, and they had uh, a long list for the organizers what to buy. The organizers bought the stuff, the catering crew didn't appear. Uh, there was a kitchen, there was a huge amount of food and uh, good food. And yeah, some people at that lab decided that there should be food and that they would step in the kitchen because they cooked for like five to six people. So, so why not doing food for 80 people? Um, yeah, that was us. Uh, in this lab, actually, uh, we got our name because we not were only cooking but also fighting. And uh, the second thing is that uh, two people stepped up to us and said, ah, it's nice food, can we book you for our lab? And we, we were booked before we even were we, whatever we is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and actually as we, as we by coincidence uh, slipped into that thing, we, we, never had, we never had a discussion about what we are, actually. So we became some kind of collective or a bit like a family in all the good and in the bad things. So if we have fights, it's really bad. But it's also if someone from the outside comes and says something about uh, any one of us, we stick together like clue. So it's, it's a strange thing. I'm not sure if it's good, but it works now, yeah, for 14 years. Anyway, um, yeah, and we, are, we do only vol volunteer work. We, um, you can't book us uh, for money. Uh, you can book us for labs, and you can book us if you are a close friend of us to your wedding or your um, birthday party or something, but you can't book us for money. So, some statistics. In the last 14 years, we approximately served 100,000 meals. So, what we usually do on a lab is that we have three meals a day, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we do that for six euros. That's the second row, three for six. So, but you can imagine how many we did to get to that hundred thousand. And what we also do is that we um, we are in the kitchen from 8 a.m. in the morning until 2 a.m. in the night. So that's usually the time we we are in the kitchen and we have something for you if you are on that lab. So if there we if we run out of the last thing we served, the last meal, 
we at least have some bread or cheese or an apple or some leftovers or whatever, we will find something for you. Um, yep. Yeah. Usually we uh, do that with a six to eight. Um, yeah, we call our, our uh, we call us cooks, but no one of us is actually a cook or learned that stuff. <laughs> so usually we are six to eight persons who do that stuff for like yeah, 100 to 150 people. Um, if it's more than 200, we we tend to have more than eight people, and actually the biggest thing we ever did was 450 people over six days. That was quite uh, an interesting challenge. I, I'm not sure if I want to do that again. Uh, on the other hand, I like challenges, so yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Happens. Yeah, and as I already mentioned, we are not only um, we are not only uh, doing food on labs. We also do it on lab-related stuff, or if there is a wedding or a birthday party or something else from friends of us. Um, or family. For example, my mother's 50, 50th birthday was catered by us. What was kind of guests were beforehand. Oh, she don't want to pay any money to the catering, so she takes that on. And afterwards, it was like, Wah! <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Um, the food we do. So that's what we want. Is we want to do uh, fresh food, uh, if possible. Uh, sometimes we take deep frozen stuff because you can't get it fresh and very often deep frozen is as good or sometimes better than if you get it fresh for vegetables for example. Um, we use only a few few pre-processed pr fr products like yeah like s soup stocks sometimes or uh, yeah sometimes we have something like curry usually we use uh, spices in their original form and mix them up together on our own. Um, we serve people their diet for any reason, so if someone is coming for something, we we, we do that. I have a, a slide on that later on, so I explain that a bit more. And we also ha always have a choice, so if there is, um, if there is a, like lunch or dinner, we not have only one meal, we have difference, and usually one of these is uh, vegetarian. Uh, yeah, requirements. That's actually, all the pictures are actually from, from, our, uh, from our kitchen and what we did. Most of them are taken by me, I'm, I'm also a hobby photographer. And uh, some pictures are from my or my girlfriend's kitchen because I made some samples but uh, everything you will see is what we actually do on labs um, the thing is but that what what you will see will be the the bit more fancy stuff because you tend to photograph the more fancy stuff and not the so not so fancy stuff um, so that uh, some of the things you will see is not the food we will serve on a, on a 150 or 200 people lab but we could serve on a 30 to 100 people lab. Yeah, and this is actually producing. Uh, we have that. Um, I don't know the English word for that. If you if you put meat in the oven and you uh, uh, not fry it or something, you braten. <laughs> that doesn't help. So anyhow, it's it's you have meat in the oven and we fill it with. Uh, that's actually uh, I think it's uh, dried plum and uh, stuff. Yeah, it's just filled meat and you... Yeah, yeah, roast. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> so you're, you're, my, you're my dictionary now. <laughs> uh, so I have now two people in the audience that take care of me because she is the one who tells me when I, uh, uh, when I start to talk about funny things and you're my dictionary. Thank you. And you will drug me up. Yeah. Uh, I, as a guest of honor, I'm not... Uh, I'm not allowed to ta talk about drugs, so we are talk about medicine, yeah? Yes. <laughs> so, um, so what does it need to feed? Uh, that's, that's ac uh, again, on German things, because we never did it abroad, so it's to German labs. So, um, the typical German, German lab is fantasy. It's um, set on a youth hostel, then the youth hostel will feed you, or on 
some scouts ground or something like that and usually they have a kitchen so that you can do proper food and um, usually it's 150 to 200 participants and yeah all of them should be fat and uh, the typical German lapper is mostly like the like the typical Nordic lapper uh, not used to his 40 kilo armor and walking through the woods all the day uh, he usually sits at a, te uh, at a desk or something like that so people eat more than they would do in their normal life so most of them some do not eat at all at LARP because they are so high on adrenaline um, yeah then it depends very much on the time of the year people tend to eat more during winter time and less during summertime um, or also different things then uh, it depends very much on the kind of participants so do you have more male do you have more female are the uh, average age younger or older uh, do you have all these people from Berlin then you only have to serve region food or stuff like that so but I think that's for every that works for every country in a different way but you will have that in every country and yeah that's the point what is not typical so for example all these region people from Berlin yeah this is actual food this is some kind of noodle soup and this is hummus and Ivar and fancy stuff so restrictions they uh, actually come from the government and you have to follow them two of my colleagues she's actually the 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 one in charge chef cushion means uh, the boss boss chef chef boss chef that I'm start to talk funny things <laughs> okay law and order so um, what you have here is uh, all the legal requirements that are differ from country to country actually in Germany they differ from from state to state or from municipality to municipality um, then you have all the stuff about hygiene what uh, was funny yesterday I mentioned that to someone um, you need uh, you absolutely need a shower and a toilet for those who uh, have something to do with the food and this shower and toilet should only be for those people so that's what most people do not know and that's actually EU law that's not in Germany then very important is to to keep the cold chain so to to make sure that everything that shouldn't raise above a certain temperature does not we for example have um, styrofoam boxes lots of styrofoam boxes for that and uh, what is also a legal requirement is that you have a roof and a floor in the kitchen you don't have to have walls but there should be a roof and there should be something like stones or it also can be wooden blankets or something but you have to have some kind of floor so uh, these are actually the styrofoam boxes I was talking about we have lots of them that's our storage room so we have lots of lots of lots of equipment and that's how we store our um, our uh, spices they are this is actually these espresso coffee tins and uh, I, I put off the uh, the thank you <laughs> and then we have it in a water proof uh, plastic bucket you can push the uh, lid on it and it's waterproof so um, what has to be organized that's actually what usually what the organizer should do um, if you run a kitchen you need water gas uh, and electric power um, at least you need electric power to get light during the night uh, we usually use gas for for cooking and not electric power but anyhow uh, and for the water is, uh, is important that you have to have cold and hot water that again is the EU restriction so you have to have it in any EU country if you cook for some people you have to have cold and hot water um, roof and floor I explained that so but that's something we tell the organizers you have to get as a roof and a floor it can be a tent with some wooden blankets on the bottom but get some 
Uh, then very important, you, you need storage because if you want to store food, you don't want any animals to go to the food. And that usually on lab sites, it's not that easy to store food for like 200 people over five days. That's a lot. That's actually really a lot. And you need a refrigerator. We um, usually use those uh, trucks that these are uh, not trucks, trailers. Uh, trailer refrigerator. You can get them when when you when you buy the uh, the beverage. You usually get them for free in Germany or for like 50 euros a week or something like that. And you can actually walk in them, have shelves and stuff, and perfect. In my from my point of view. Um, money. That's very important. At least in Germany, it's uh, like that. That these uh, big markets where you can buy all the food. They uh, have some restrictions, how many you can pay with a credit card or um, your bank card. Usually it's like 1,000 or 1,500 euros. What is a lot for people that uh, want to buy food for their kitchen at home, but what is not a lot if you want to feed uh, a lot of LARPer. So um, you need cash. So cash is really a good thing. Um, and we, we went to... So uh, those shops already was like two or three or four thousand euros in cash, and we're like, okay, we're gonna do this in your shop now. Get it, and we will get our car. Um, yeah. Then it's also a good idea to know your groceries and bakeries near the location because you will forget something in the big market, and you have to find it somewhere else. And um, then transport. It's usually people think I go with my car, I have that big car, I go to the next uh, big shop and buy all the stuff and drive it to the, uh, to the lab. You won't because usually a car has something like 500 to 600 kilogram that you can put in your car. That's not much if you want to feed a whole lab for like three to four days and 150 people. I have a transporter. I can put 1.1 uh, ton of uh, stuff in my transporter. Even that is often not enough. So we usually do that with uh, a truck or with a trailer or stuff like that. You you need lots of lots of um, what is the word for what you can put in your car on extra payload. Thank you. So I have now I have two translators. That's good. <laughs> so you need lots of lots of payload. Really, you will. Uh, that's actually shopping for a small event. From the back seat that you see there to the end of uh, the trunk. That's my car. It's meters, and it's one meter seventy wide. And I think that's mm, that might be like eighty centimeters to a meter. And this was the, was a event with. I think 70 participants for like three days. So it's it's a lot you have to buy. And this is actually uh, improvised um, storage, how we do it. Uh, it looks pretty chaotic, but it, it has a system. And we have these um, wooden benches and tables, you, you have them a lot in Germany. They are foldable, you can hire them for a weekend for like three euros or something like that. Put them on another, fix them with something and you have pretty good improvised storage. So this is in the actual kitchen. Usually we try to do it in another room, but yeah, works different sometimes. Um, this shouldn't be red. Anyways, um, this is actually an old old photo from the ah, like ten years ago because I I I wasn't able to find a good photo from nowadays to show you how a kitchen a improvised kitchen works. This is only, as I told you, a roof and a floor, and uh, there's one wall, but <laughs> only one wall, and we have all these gas stoves here and big pots, and our uh, stuff here and yeah. It can work like that. That's from an actual lab. Um, my sister and uh, one of the guys who's cooking with us, they look a bit different today, but yeah. So our gas stoves, 
we have, I think, six that we own. Um, is uh, e each uh, gas stove has 12 kilowatts? That's something around uh, 15 horsepower. That's a lot, actually. And you can heat uh, 40 liters of water from tap water cold to boiling in about 35 to 40 minutes. That's quite fast, actually. Uh, our pots, um, we use range from 35 to 70 liters. This is actually a 35er. Um, and uh, we have 10 10 ish of them, and then we have a lot of small pots you are, you would use in your home, so like from from one to eight ten liters and um, yeah, we have a complete mobile kitchen. you saw a storage room, and um, we own all these we own all these stuff like what you need spatulas uh uh, knives, um, some basic cutlery, uh, all that stuff. You have that in, in boxes like that. And we can bring that to, to a lab. If people say we don't have a, have a good kitchen there, bring your own stuff, we can bring that. And um, yeah, when I, when I went through that lecture with a friend of mine, he said, um, oh, you mentioned who you own that. Who owns that? So uh, actually, hmm, yeah. We, <laughs> there is uh, we we haven't defined what we is, but uh, we we it's all stuff we got over the years from from some people that ate uh, at our kitchen and said oh it's a, it's a nice thing you can do I have something at home I can give it to you. We also asked the organizers that uh, if you liked our food please give us something afterwards so we usually get another pot another gas stove or something like that and over the years we got all that stuff and nowadays it, it barely fits in my van but uh, it's not the smallest car so that's how we fin financed all the stuff we own so uh, then there's my equipment that that's actually not um, not only my, but uh, every single uh, participants or not participants, every single uh, cook's participant uh, equipment. So that's what I usually take with me for a lab. And it's uh, everyone else from us has uh, his own knives and stuff, uh, specialized tools, stuff we we need. For example, I'm I'm pretty bad in in calculating how, mu how much time meat needs in the oven, so I have that uh, meat temperature uh, measurement thingy, whatever it is called. <laughs> Thermometer. Thermometer is a word. Um, and we have the saying in the kitchen that uh, if you buy something and it lasts uh, at least two to three labs with us in the kitchen, it will last a whole life in your kitchen at home. And that's actually, that's actually true, because we, we, have, we have a huge amount of stuff that do not work if you really work with it. So I actually would love to have, um, have some kind of uh, uh, deal with a company that we prove if their stuff is good. <laughs> Their equipment, that's uh, what the lab organizers should have. This is actually one of the kitchen, uh, if you come in a kitchen like that, that's cool. It's pretty old school as you can see from the design, but that's a cool kitchen. It has everything you need, so wow, wonderful. Uh, what you can't see is it also has a, a, cooling, a cooling compartment and stuff like that, but it has everything you need. But um, if this is not there, we ask for some basic things. As I already told, like 300 times, roof and floor. Then hot and cold water, what I also explained, that it needs hot and cold water. Shower and toilet. You need at least one shower and one toilet for those who work with food. And it's, it shall only be used by those people. Um, you need... Oh, yeah. Uh, um, usually we are six to eight persons. Yeah, and we, we totally get along with one shower and to one toilet. So even if the shower and the toilet is in the same room, it's not a problem because, as I said in the beginning, it's pretty much like family. So it's like one is showering, one is on toilet, the other one is brushing teeth. We can do that. It's not a problem. <laughs> um, 
after after 15 years uh, there's nothing you haven't seen <laughs> so <laughs> but we don't want to talk about that <laughs> okay so uh electric power i explained that also it's it's it comes quite handy with some things some tools you need in the kitchen but at least you need it for the light and um what we also ask for is a place to rest we want to have a bed um we want uh to have uh yeah a bed in a, in a proper room or a tent or whatever uh then we asked for the money because we want to have that cash that we can buy all the stuff and not have any problems with cars uh the transport if I can do it with my car, we do it with my car, but if it's a bigger event and it has to be done by a truck, of course the organizers have to organize the truck. And uh, we ask for beer. So I already told you that in the beginning. Yeah. So, um, usually we want six euros per person per day. So for six euros we do three uh, meals like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, and that covers also all the we call it needs like cleaning stuff, um, some uh, yeah, paper towels, aluminium foil, all the stuff you usually yeah you usually think don't do not think about. It's actually it's actually expensive if you don't think about that. And then we want. Uh, fuel. We do not want to have. Uh, so we want to have our our expenses. We want to have paid them. So if we go to a lab site and cook there, they have to pay our fuel. Um, we want to have the transport. I already explained that. Accommodation, beer. I also explained that. And we do not renegotiate about that. So if people say, "Oh, could you do it for like 5:30 per person?" or uh, can't we give you all the fuel but a bit more, less or something like that? We say, uh, uh, it's pretty easy. You can have us for that if you want. If you don't want, it's not a problem. We will come as a participant to your lab, but we won't cook there. And, um, yeah, of course, we ask for friendly donations if you liked it afterwards. But that's, uh, that's not a must. That's if you liked it. Uh, now to diets. Um, we uh, usually have lots of people that um, don't eat some specific food. This has different reasons. So uh, the, the biggest group usually is vegetarians and vegans. Then that's easy because for, for every meal we usually have a vegan or vegetarian option. So not a big business. Then we have religious diets that is manageable with almost every religion but with uh, the Jewish diet because you can't cook kosher. The point about cooking kosher is that you have actually you need two kitchens and no cutlery from the one kitchen should come in the other kitchen because then the kitchen isn't cho sober, uh, uh, not sober, kosher anymore. And uh, it's not that you can do it in a dishwasher or something. If you cut with a knife once meat, it shouldn't cut ever in its life something like cheese, for example. So if you mix that up, you have to throw it away. And as you can't guarantee that, you can't cook kosher. That's actually not possible. Um, yeah, every other religion diet, as far as I know, is pretty easy just leave things out or yeah uh, then we also um, we also uh, ask people to tell us if they have a allergic to if they are allergic to something um, we usually take a photo of these people uh, and ask them what is not in your diet and what do you like especially because we do not uh, prepare some food for them we ask them to come like 50 minutes before they are hungry. So, for example, if you would be allergic, I asked you to come 50 minutes before you come, before you're hungry. When you come to the kitchen, I say, "Okay, sit down," and I would prepare your food for you. Um, 
we do not have that many, many allergic people, so it's easier to do it that way. And we usually have one of the cooks that is in that lab that is only there to serve the people with allergics. Works usually pretty fine. Yeah, then we also have the mm, I don't like that people. So for example, I don't like rice. Some people don't like rice. That's uh, fair enough because I do not want to decide if it if I don't like rice, my religion forbids me to eat rice, I'm allergic to rice, or I'm a rice vegetarian, if anything is better or less worthy, who am I to decide? So if people tell me I don't like rice, they don't get rice. But usually I ask them, is it okay for you that you take care about that? And most people say like, like yeah, it's okay, I, I just skip the rice and I'm pretty fine. Or I will put out all the beans because I don't like beans. That's okay. If it's that hard that you can't do it on your own, then we just call you allergic. Pretty, pretty easy. And then there's the last people that actually, they, it's not that they are allergic or that they don't eat something, they just want to have attention. They are in the kitchen like, ah, I don't eat that, and I don't eat that, and I eat that, but only if it's blue, and Sunday, and blah, 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 blah. You have those people, and you can't get rid of those people. And uh, we usually try to be a bit less polite to them. <laughs> to, to, just to, to make them, to make them uh, feel, oh, uh, they recognized. We still serve them, of course, because y you never know. And who am I to decide? But you have those people. It's, it's only a little, they are annoying, but yeah. Uh, we, could, we could say we do not serve all the other people because of those people, but that would be bullshit, actually. Yes? Actually, I can't tell you. So we had, we had a lot. We had nuts and, uh, of course, uh, uh, lactose, what is that in English? Yeah, so we have that, of course, a lot. But uh, we, once had, um, we once had a girl that was quite, quite cute. She came there and had these uh, uh, classes with baby f uh, food. You know, these small classes with, um, because her doctor wanted to her wanted her to eat only that to find out about her allergics. So she didn't knew what it is, but she, was, she had a sp special diet. And then we were like, it's no problem, we will feed you. And she was like, ah, but it's so complicated. We, uh, come on, give us a list. And she had actually a list of things she were able to eat, not a list of things she were, <laughs> were not able to eat. And it was a very short list. <laughs> and uh, for example, all spices, all salt, all sugar, all fat, all meat were out of that list. And then we were like, wow, what to do now? <laughs> but we managed. She, she went home with all the baby food classes and we fed her. <laughs> it was quite challenging, but it, it works. So for example, um, as she were allowed to, to have tea, we uh, spiced food with tea, like for, uh, yeah, mint tea and stuff like that. It works. Yeah, what's possible? So, if we do bigger events, we of course have lots of, so it, it looks much like that. Uh, that's also an old photo, what you can see from the quality. Um, this is a new photo, it's not from an actual event, it's in my girlfriend's kitchen, but it looks pretty much like that. Um, we have lots of stews, stews and soups. Uh, yeah, simple two component or three component dishes like, for example, um, uh, uh, roast beef with mashed potatoes and some vegetables, for example. So si very simple things. And uh, then we have a lot of takeaway stuff. So what we do is, for example, falafel, and we uh, skip the tin foil around, but do it in, in paper. So people can just carry it around the lab because it's it's in gameish, it's okay. You can carry it around. It's 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 actually casual food, 
and um, actually these takeaway things we make that's um, that's uh, the most um, most people ask for these foods because it's, it's so easy you don't have to bring your cutlery you don't have to wash your dishes you just take it away throw away the paper afterwards everything is fine um, yeah then what what is also something we we have on our uh, list is we do not w want to cook for the masses because that's what usually people in cantinas or in youth hostels try they want to try that food tastes for everyone good that doesn't work because we have all different tastes tastes and for example if i do a chili con carne and it's not spicy it's not chili con carne so uh what we do we cook everything like we we think from our point of view it should be done and then we have like two or three or four dishes on every given time and then people can choose and if you say chili con carne is too hot for me just don't take it there's something else um this some people do not understand that some people are then ah, i want to have chili con carne right do you eat hot no so you can't have it yeah but i want it yeah but it's not chili con carne if it's not hot <laughs> so mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yes yeah, so sometimes we do it a bit bit less hot than we uh, then we call it a swiss chili because it's neutral but uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, the thing is, we, we try to tell people that if you don't like a specific thing that's in there, just choose something else. Yeah, and actually that's how we do it. And now I'm going to start a power, uh, not, not a PowerPoint, a, a slideshow with some pictures. And uh, while we have these pictures, you can ask me questions for whatever you want. Also for the pictures uh, or for what I told you or for what I forgot. So, questions? Yes, I give you the microphone, you pass it on. Have you uh, done any dishes in foreign labs in other countries or just in Germany? We just cooked in Germany until now. Uh, we would cook in every other country if, if that is log logistically possible. But we haven't. If you want to book us for China and it's logistically possible, we do that. Over there, two people. First the, first the zombie master and then what is on the other hour, oh, it's some kind of Finnish role-playing thing from uh, the north. <laughs> okay, uh, so it looks pretty modern all the way around. And you, you said a lot, uh, you, you want uh, a roof and floor and so, and so on and so on. So my question is, if you don't have a roof and floor, you don't have gas, you don't have hot and cold, uh, hot and cold water, and you don't necessarily have a freezing, a free a fridge or, or something else. How do you avoid poisoning people? We don't do it then. We we actually don't do it then. And if you do it, it's uh, actually um, uh, I don't know the English word for that, but it's against the law. So you can be judged for that. I wouldn't do it. If you want to do it, you can do it. But I wouldn't do that. Is that okay as an answer? Okay. Yes. Uh, I, was, uh, I want to ask, have you ever got a request to serve like real uh, medieval food? Yes. And do you do it? Absolutely. It's a m bit more expensive. Yeah. And also with, uh, with all the details, like the kitchen should look like it. Uh, if the kitchen should look like that, that's the organizer's problem because we don't have that and we don't have the money to buy the stuff. If they buy the stuff and if they do the stuff, no problem, we do that. Uh, but still it has to be, uh, it has to have the basic 
requirements, the legal requirements of that kitchen. Because if it doesn't, it's again, as I already told you, it's against the law. And it's, the, uh, it's actually an EU law, so it's also in Finland or in some other country. Most people do not know. They just do it. And it works fine until you have a problem with someone is poisoned by your food. And then you have a real problem. That's what most people do not have in mind. So I, won't, I wouldn't do it. Thank you. Thank you. Over there, two people. Speed run! Uh, have you ever had any kind of uh, really bad, almost disaster, like uh, the equipment is not working or you run out of uh, food and have no extras or... How many time do you have? <laughs> No, actually, actually, thank you. No, I'm, I'm, I meant it. we have lots of, lots of, lots of disasters. <laughs> so, um, actually, uh, one, of, one of the funniest thing I can tell you, there was um, we had that lab, and the organizer, organizer said that they would get one of these por pork thingies that is in the whole, the, the whole pick on a, on a uh, species. <laughs> Thanks. And um, we were like, yeah, fine. And we do the side things, the side orders. And the organizers, yeah, cool. And we prepare for that. And um, yeah, like five to six hours before the pork should arrive, some of the organizers recognized that they didn't ask for the pork and uh, that it wouldn't arrive. And they came to the kitchen said something like, uh, yes, we have that problem. <laughs> and we were like, fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> and uh, like, it was like, fuck. Okay, let's go. We took out our, our cell phones and we were uh, instantly, like five people at the same time, like, mom, aunt, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we got different recipes and then we mixed them up and uh, went to the next uh, butcher and bought lots of meat and then we made that roasted uh, roasted uh, filled stuff meat it's actually years 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 ago nowadays it's a standard we do it always because people demand it <laughs> it's from our grandma's aunts and mother's best together <laughs> yeah another question I think there was yeah uh, I was wondering about the legal requirements are there some uh, limits to how many people there has to be for it to be a legal requirement or so, sorry I didn't got you no it's it's on it's on it's on I, I uh, just no, I have done catering for scout camps yeah. and also bigger ones and I haven't come across the requirements of roof and floor or hot water the shower requirement I know but I was wondering is there some limit that if it's say less than 50 people it isn't a requirement no, or no there isn't no, uh, there's not it's uh, as soon as it's commercial scouts are not commercial but labs are because you demand money for that so if you if you do a lab for example in a in a closed group of people that pay some um, that pay some money to be in that group like like a yearly thing and you take the money out of that you're safe as soon as you demand money for it even so you you do not uh, do it for for gaining money but then it's commercial and then these re legal requirements are there yes um in finland uh we have this thing thing called non-commercial larping yeah but that yeah. doesn't work that because th it's uh, <laughs> that <laughs> it's an eu regulation it, it's it's a gray area kind of no, it's not. It's, it's uh, actually, not actually. Uh, <laughs> actually some some judges made that pretty clear. Even if I bake, uh, uh, make some bakery, and go out and sell it for like fifty cent, and put all the money to some cancer helps thing or some that's commercial because I get money from the people, and that's the point. It's not if it's. Uh, we also have this non-commercial organizers in in Germany, and we are one of those. But that's not the point. Sorry. Yeah, well, anyway, my, my question was actually on, on is there, uh, I'm going on the regulations also because I haven't run across on some of these, uh, is there a kind of limit on how you need to do these regulations? Can you, for instance, 
if you need hot water, can you have a water boiler that runs on yeah. gas? Can yes. You have, can you have kind of, uh, of course, you can have electricity from, from a generator. You can have yeah. that sort of organization. It's not a, pro it's not a problem. Yeah. Actually, uh, the, in, at least in Germany, and I think it's all over the EU, it, uh, it depends on if you're a restaurant or if you are a... Uh, like we are volunteer caterer or if you do it outdoors or stuff like that. So there are, um, you can work around some problems, but some basic things you still need. Or for example, we once had um, <coughs> the problem that there was no shower at the location. So every day we got in our car in the morning, drove to the next swimming uh, pool, had a shower, drove back, went into the kitchen. That works. You can work around some problems. The toilet might be a mit bit more tricky. Yeah, the toilet tree tends to be on our sites. You have like like two or three toilets, but they're all together, and you can't kind of cut one out because then there's two people in the kitchen and 50 people in the LARP. Yeah, but uh, that's actually something you have to. Yeah, I you know. have to make. Let's say it like that. We usually put a sign on the toilet just for the kitchen crew. Anyone else? Okay. I forgot my real question. <laughs> okay. But this is, what has been your mo most ambitious project in LARP kitchening? this 450 people we served over six days because when we started the project the organizers told us 300 and then on the day the the people arrived there arrived more people than they expected and it was like every hour it was like no it's not 300 it's 320 oh now it's 340 oh uh, maybe it's 360 and uh, for the first day we hadn't f enough food for everyone so actually it was enough but we we hadn't we run out of some of the things we had. So that was pretty frustrating, actually. But then on the second day, we fixed that problem by just buying more. Just a short comment. I'm a lawyer, and I have a history with working with liability insurance and tort law in Finland. And if any one of you has worries or questions over food poisoning in LARPs, and if you're worried over causing trouble and cooking in LARPs in Finland, I'd be more than happy to address your worries maybe later on, because I think that um, LARPs in Finland are so small that there really isn't much to worry over. <laughs> but I only know Finnish law and the Anyways. interpretations of it. Anyways. So, Let's just not go into the uh, details of that. Could you stand up and show your face? That's interesting. Remember that woman, because that's a woman you want to ask. <laughs> and that's actually, uh, that's actually a problem, because if you, if you come in the, in the uh, situation that you are guilty for poison, poison someone, then you really have a problem. Yeah, in, Ger in, Germ in Germany, the health insurance would. Yep. Okay, you said the majority of German LARPs are fantasy settings, but uh, I, I assume you have catered LARPs with different settings and different atmospheres, yeah. and then I, I assume also that you follow this atmosphere in the food. Yes. So could you, like, in very broad terms, say, you know, let's say it's a space LARP or it's a medieval LARP or fantasy LARP, how do you differentiate and um, maybe some... Um, some tricks we, which are not uh, that you can share and you're willing to share, you know, how do you, in these very spartan conditions you have to work in at, at a LARP, how do you make these themed foods? So we had 90-20 um, slabs and we made all that fancy foods with like eight courses and stuff like that. That's, uh, that, that's actually fun because you can do the real food. Then we had um, uh, we had post apocalyptic labs. At one post apocalyptic lab, the the organizers uh, took all the tins and ripped off the paper of the tins. Then they 
printed on a barcode that we as a kitchen could recognize what is in the tin to tell allergics, no, I wouldn't eat that. And then it was spread all over the house or field. And people came to the kitchen and said, I found that. Can you cook something for me? That was actually fun. That was one of the, one of the most fun uh, situations we had. We, of course, had some basic stuff in the kitchen so that we could pimp up stuff. And, yeah, and we, we have this uh, tin opener that opens a tin very uh, without a sharp edge. And we, we made food and put it back into the tin and presented it in the tin. So that was really, that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, and it, 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 it was really, for us, it was fun because it was something different. And we also used food color. For example, on the breakfast, we had milk, and we put just a little bit of blue food color into the milk, and that looks wrong. <laughs> it's, it's not blue. It just looks wrong. You, it's, it's like you, no, I don't want to drink that. And, uh, yeah, stuff like this. So that was actually fun. And then we had, on two labs, we made an um, a la carte restaurant. On, it was a fantasy-ish LARP, and we made an a la carte restaurant with everything you want in an a la carte restaurant, with a waiter that uh, has a book, and he's, uh, no, sorry, you haven't reserved, we have something for tomorrow for you, and uh, may I seat you, and blah, 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 and all the fancy stuff. Uh, there we actually had one person who, who said that He's used to go to a la carte restaurants and that he, when he heard they, we would make a la carte restaurant, he was like, yeah, yeah it's a lab a la carte restaurant. But then he pro came into a, our restaurant and there was all these candles and all the cutlery, cutlery and all the classes and stuff. Blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I, I felt like when I was 14 years old and my parents took me for the first time in a real a la carte restaurant. <laughs> and I was like, yeah! <laughs> that's what we want, yeah. So that's stuff we did. We, I, we had plenty of more, but that's some examples. Some more? So if we are done, I would uh, say thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any further questions, I'm here. Thank you. Con 